Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for this Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Dave Percy, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up first, uh, quite an area, uh, quite a warning area here from the Seward Peninsula northward, there across uh, just about all the Brooks Range here. Uh, just north Arctic Village, on out to the Arctic coast, uh, winter storm winds are snow and wind, uh, but back to the west, and uh, that'll eventually increase here and move eastward. And then we've got winter weather advisories here from the Yukon Delta over to St. Lawrence Island, and then up across Galena and into the upper Yukon Valley, and then back down to the uh, eastern Alaska Range, and there is a winter storm warning for uh, snow for the greater Fairbanks area here. And that uh, slides on down into the Denali Park area as well along the mountains there. And then abruptly cuts off into the, uh, uh, the, the Madanuska Valley there from McGrath as the snowfall amounts will be uh, distinctly lighter than back up here to the northwest. And uh, looking for, again, eight, uh, nine inches of snow total there for the Fairbanks area through that time period, heaviest back here over the western mountains on the southern slopes of the Brooks Range, where anywhere from 8 to 12 inches will fall again by late afternoon or by tomorrow night back to the west, and then some of that will be really heavy and wet, so lesser amounts on the coastline there, and then this advisory will probably end for St. Lawrence Island uh, later on tonight or into tomorrow as well as the Yukon Delta already mixing with rain in those areas. And for satellite imagery, you can see the outline of a pretty good ridge of high pressure right through here that's shifting eastward. This front pushing uh, the wind rain into the St. Lawrence Island area and snow and blowing snow back up to the northwest coast there. Main center farther back to the west and uh, Cirrus working into the central interior with the precipitation producing area back to the west and to the north, but it'll be slowly moving east and southeast here over the next couple of days, uh, tonight into tomorrow. Otherwise, uh, a lot of sunshine here over southern Alaska, Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island, uh, with the uh, cold north winds, northerly flow aloft there, keeping the temperatures cooler, and then a lot more clouds start picking up here, mostly west of Nikolski, Adak and Atka, light rain and fog, and that uh, extends all the way out to Shimia, and then a storm down here off the southeast coast, or actually south of the Queen Charlotte's, affecting the southeast coast. Another development right through here, it stands out quite clearly. They're southwest of Port Alexander, and so uh, rain and snow down over the southern southeast coast, and that's mostly in the form of snow, whatever falls over the central interior there. But amounts are quite light, and uh, major weather factor, the outflow winds through the channeled areas here of the northern panhandle, Skagway, back over to about Yakutat, uh, could see gusts uh, in excess of 50 miles an hour here for tonight and tomorrow. Less wind, Copper River Delta, uh, dry all over the uh, Kenai Peninsula area, and again back down to Kodiak Island. And running this uh, through again, that uh, cirrus band really washing out as it moves eastward there, really not any weather associated with that at all. Everything back out here to the west with the uh, more intense storm. And there were some, a uh, little bit of areas of light snow skirting the eastern Arctic coast there with the heavier amounts and definitely the heavier winds occurring back to the northwest. On the chart today, uh, 1,040 millibar high centered almost on top of uh, on Alaska, keeping it nice over the Alaska Peninsula into Bristol Bay as well as Kodiak Island, leaking up with a slightly weaker center here over the uh, eastern interior area, 40 mile country, and that gradient here from the lower pressure out over the ocean and that much higher pressure getting those channeled outflow winds here, actually from Valdez and Prince William Sound eastward into Yakutat and the northern panhandle. Less lines here down to the south, so lighter winds, 
but a lot more moisture there, rain or rain and snow mixed, uh, depending on your elevation here and your latitude. And that'll continue and actually increase as this uh, low pressure center gradually moves a little bit to the north and a much tighter gradient with the snow and blowing snow, as I mentioned. Wind gusts uh, a little over 70 miles an hour occurring at Cape Lisbon there, and pretty strong gusty winds back into the Bering Strait. To about St. Lawrence Island, they drop off a little bit there. Warmer air, though, rain mixed with snow going on currently there, and warmer air pushing uh, areas of rain now into the uh, Yukon Delta and uh, Norton Sound there, over to about uh, Unalakle, picking up some rain now, but still in the form, temperatures still below freezing along the southern Seward Peninsula. But uh, snow and blowing snow, southwest flow, heaviest amounts again will be occurring along the western Brooks Range. And that will continue through tonight. Areas of snow with those warnings there will be kind of off and on, but heaviest back to the northwest here and out along the Arctic coast. Windy, snow and blowing snow there with the warnings in that area. And then this uh, area of snow right around the greater Fairbanks area cuts off south of the mountains. Not much change here. Uh, for southern Alaska through tonight and rain continues to increase here over the southern southeast coast. Look for a mixed condition there, especially whatever moisture gets in there and collides with the uh, outflow Arctic air coming down through the, uh, from Skagway there through Lynn Canal, Glacier Bay, a little bit of a Taku wind thing going on, but not too bad. And on over to about Yakutat, out west, uh, southerly flow bringing surges of moisture northward, which tomorrow We'll push a warm front uh, across the western Aleutians, so rain and windy conditions, actually ADAC, Atka, and that'll increase and get a little more steadier and windier as you head out toward the western Aleutians. Otherwise, high pressure holding over the eastern Bering Sea, so light winds, maybe some sunshine, Alaska, Pribilofs, back to St. Lawrence Island, much better conditions uh, tomorrow there, as well as the southwest coast. All the heavy weather now up along the uh, Brooks Range on up to the Arctic coast or that low center just north of uh, Wainwright. Areas of snow again continue here through the Tanana Valley on down to the Alaska Range and in the western Alaska Range that moisture is slipping on in and uh, looks like lighter precipitation amounts for especially tomorrow afternoon for the pan and although that low actually uh, redevelops back down off the Queen Charlotte's and it's not all that strong at that. And then for the Monday forecast, it actually uh, develops a little bit more there and uh, really doesn't move much, but most of the rain will be over the Queen Charlotte's to about Dixon entrance, dry southern pan. And we see uh, mostly cloudy skies, otherwise uh, colder, less cloudiness and windier up across the northern pan. And again, not much change here for the, nor uh, the, or the North Gulf Coast into Prince William Sound. Got areas of light snow now banked up along the slopes of the Alaska Range, western central areas, on down into Northway and Toke. Less snow now for the Fairbanks area. And then the bulk of the moisture now restricted here, really from the Brooks Range on out to the Arctic coast. So snow will continue in those areas through Monday, the end of light rain and fog and mild temperatures for the Pribilofs, the Alaska Peninsula. Rain possibly heavy at times, continued windy here uh, for the central Aleutians northward in advance of that front, becoming westerly and showery back towards Shimia. Lows for tonight, coldest here in the east, mildest there with the increasing southerly flow to the west there with uh, upper 20s to lower 30s for the southwest interior. And again, that warm air, a low really not falling below 30 degrees, single numbers for the eastern Arctic coast, uh, maybe 10 below for the upper Yukon Valley or so. And the Copper River Basin may slip a little below zero, otherwise 20s and 30s for the Panhandle. Highs tomorrow, the teens east, upper 20s western Arctic coast, 30 to 40 here over the southwest. And it looks like mostly in the 40s for the uh, Aleutians. And then the high or the lows for uh, Monday morning, uh, not much change here over the eastern interior, anywhere from uh, 5 to 10 below to milder there with the clouds, mid teens for the uh, central Tanana Valley, 20s Arctic coast, lower 30s on the southwest coast. And then for Monday, uh, teens over the eastern interior and warmer out west. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving into aviation weather with the uh, weather depiction here for flying weather. IFR heading east and southeast here, spreading into the Cuscombe Valley and eventually the western Alaska range into uh, the western central Tanana Valley tomorrow afternoon, extending back to much of the Arctic coast north slope. A lot of marginal VFR out here in areas over the Bering Sea, another batch of IFR spreading in and covering the western Aleutians.
heading in toward Atka in the afternoon with marginal VFR all the way up to the Aleutian Range. Good VFR, Cup River Basin, Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, VFR all the way down the southeast coast. And then for uh, afternoon, you can see the IFR shifting eastward and sort of hanging up here along the Alaska Range there with marginal VFR all the way down across all of Bristol Bay, the Alaska Peninsula, northwestward and northward out to the uh, Fox Islands. And now some marginal VFR showing up down over the southern southeast coast of that next storm rolling up from the south there beginning to affect the area. And a pretty good jog of IFR here northeastward and a little bit to the east there, covering Atka by the afternoon. Marginal VFR just about everywhere else, except the Copper River Basin, Kodiak Island, South Central Alaska. And then for uh, Monday morning, a little bit of improvement here. Still VFR for Cook Inlet and Prince William Sound in the Copper River Basin. IFR now, uh, trying to get up to the northern Bering Sea there, just north of uh, St. George Island, but south of Nunavak Island. Lots of IFR continuing over the southwest Bering and the ADAC area on out to Shimia, IFR along the Alaska Range, eastward into the 40 Mile Country, also up there over the North Slope to the Arctic Coast, and improving here over the Western Interior. And then for uh, Monday afternoon, lots of IFR sliding in toward the Southwest Coast, but the marginal VFR just grazing the coastline in the afternoon, and the Alaska Peninsula also marginal, with IFR holding here west of, Ad west of Atka and from ADAC on out, uh, pretty widespread IFR there. Now just some marginal VFR in the north side of the Alaska Range, improving over the eastern Tanana Valley, 40 mile country, marginal up there over the North Slope and Arctic Coast, and uh, marginal VFR advancing northwestward across a panhandle. IFR for Anatovic tomorrow, same forecast for Attigan. And for Lake Clark and Merrill, becoming marginal VFR, especially on the western approaches. Same forecast for rainy. And windy, marginal VFR becoming IFR later on in the afternoon. Isabel, VFR becoming marginal VFR. Mintesta, marginal VFR becoming IFR. And for Tanita, VFR with uh, Portage looking good too, VFR there. Chilkoot and White, both uh, VFR. And for the freezing levels, uh, the cold air here over the interior eastward, 2,000 feet all the way down off the chart there to, uh, at the surface up along the coastline and cutting through the central panhandle. Big push of warm air out here over the Bering Sea, 8,000 feet all the way up to or a little past the purple office this late tonight and to the Alaska Peninsula, 2,000 feet here, slowly advancing eastward, slowly down across Bristol Bay and then a little bit cooler behind the front out over the far western Aleutians. And for icing, areas of moderate icing above about 9,000 feet, uh, a little more widespread area of the lighter stuff, sliding eastward there past Atka in the afternoon. Big area of light to isolated moderate rime icing, again, also pushing eastward and down to the probably the Alaska range late in the day or by early evening with uh, icing spreading into the southern southeast coast above about 3,000 feet, but out here way up there at about 9,000 feet. And for the jet stream, Big ridge here, Bering Sea, northwest flow 100 to 120 knots there, right across the Alaska Range and Cook Inlet, and then southward, completely missing the panhandle. And for 9,000 feet, we've got uh, pretty strong flow at this level over the western interior, 50, 45 to 50 knots from the west, St. Lawrence Island, up there toward Kivalina, and becoming northwest, 50 to 55 knots, right down into Shelikoff Strait, and then diminishing south of there and a pretty good flow here through the central interior, 30 to 35 knots. And at uh, 3,000 feet, look for the winds to increase here from Dixon entrance into the extreme southern southeast coast late in the day with that next system, 25 to 30 south central Alaska, 40 to 50 knot winds up over the northwest interior, lighter winds across the ridge axis, southerlies 45 to 50 out over the Aleutians. And for turbulence, Moderate chop below 6,000 feet up here over the western north slope and Arctic coast, areas of there for the Aleutians. And for Kodiak Island and the lee side of the Aleutian Range, occasional moderate chop below 4,000 feet, increasing turbulence for the Panhandle. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. As you well know, you can get forecast information for any day of the week. Today, tonight, tomorrow, out to six or seven days. It includes the high and low temperature, the wind direction, the chance of rain or snow in your part of Alaska. But did you know that there is information available to forecast out to two weeks? 
So the question is, how would you use that information? And here to answer that question today and tell us a lot more about climate services from the U.S. National Weather Service Alaska region is Rick Toman. He is the program manager for the Climate Science and Services. And uh, Rick, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Dave. How would we use information that is out to two weeks instead of just the high and low and the chance of rain? Well, Dave, as we move out in time, of course, uh, forecasts become more uncertain. So as we move into that second week from now, we're not looking at specific uh, highs or lows or precipitation amounts at any given place. Uh, what we can do with the state of the science at this point is get a handle on patterns. Uh, so we can uh, say things like um, increased chances for uh, stormy weather in the Bering Sea uh, in two weeks, or we've been in a cold weather pattern, looks like uh, eight to 10 days from now, that pattern's going to change. Those are the kind of forecasts uh, that we can currently make in that second week. So you're increasing lead time for perhaps big or small weather events and telling us the likelihood of uh, maybe uh, more coastal storms or wind events in some areas? Uh, those are the kinds of things that, um, that we hope to be able to, to let Alaskans know in the, in the second week forecast. And if you have an activity or an event that you would find that kind of advance notice useful, whether it's moving stuff off of the beach, whether to go out hunting or to come back from camp, those kind of decisions, the week two uh, provides uh, the opportunity uh, for you to get a handle on that kind of information. Okay, what other type of weather impacts that we're familiar with might Alaskans use climate services for? Well, in the forecast realm, we can go uh, provide some information from this uh, week two, say the eight to 14 day period, uh, on out uh, to the uh, monthly and even seasonal time scale. Now those monthly seasonal forecasts are still kind of uh, just really very much pattern dependent and the amount of detail that we can provide at this point is still uh, pretty limited generally uh, indications of how temperature and precipitation will fall in, in uh, maybe above normal, below normal kind of range. Uh, but in the week two period, uh, we can uh, be considerably more specific than that as far as the general patterns and the really the impacts on Alaskans. Okay, so we would be talking about generalizations there that would, would tell us that the, the period might be more stormy, might be more hot, more dry, more cold, and th situations like that. That's correct. So we're not going to be able to say in which community, uh, for instance, there's the threat of coastal flooding, but we can, we'll, can often be able to tell we're moving into a pattern that would be conducive to big Bering Sea storms. So if you're in an area that that could potentially uh, impact you, you'll want to pay attention uh, to uh, the weather forecast. Okay. Now every day and every hour of the day, the National Weather Service is working on a forecast for the next day. But how do you start your forecast process for that extended period that goes out beyond seven days? Well, the way things work right now, we start off with the expected general flow pattern uh, for Alaska and, and the whole world, really. We, and then we narrow that down to Alaska. So we start off with the basic computer model forecast. There's uh, quite a few different computer models that we look at, bring those together. And then another important part of that is we as attempt to assess the confidence. Um, the reality is often two weeks away, the computer models are very divergent. They have lots of different solutions. And that's an indication that we don't have much confidence. Uh, but when we see uh, more agreement in that time frame, and when that agreement is a pattern that will be potentially very impactful for Alaska or is a big change from what we've been in, that's when we can then take that expected pattern. We have computer models forecasting it. We've assessed the confidence. Now we can move that forward. How, using our experience as Alaskan weather forecasters, how does that uh, typically play out for Alaska? So is this a stormy pattern for the Bering Sea? Is this an extra rainy period for Southeast? Is this the kind of pattern that generates uh, strong winds potentially in, in the Anchorage Bowl? Is this a deep cold pattern for the interior? All of those are the kind of things that we're looking at in these large scale patterns. That's very different than telling you that the winds on 10 days from now are gonna be gusting to 120 on the hillside. We're looking for patterns 
not, um, not the very specific information that the Weather Service will then hone in on as the event gets closer. So the idea is to keep the five, six, seven day forecast the same where you are getting the standard high and low temperature and the chance of wind or rain, but further out you get a broad general forecast, but as the time gets closer to that event we'll get a lot more specific. That's correct. Okay, very good. So how can people use this information if I am out in the bush and I want to see is a coastal storm expected in my region or is a chance for that improving? over the next uh, two to three weeks, where could I go to get information like that? When we see that uh, potentially impactful or a big change in the weather is coming uh, eight to 14 days out, uh, typically we will uh, start to highlight that on uh, the Weather Service Facebook site. Um, we might produce a YouTube video uh, highlighting that, linking that on our Facebook site. Um, so often we don't, at this point, we don't have much to say in that because we're really looking for those forecasts of opportunities. But one thing we can say very likely as uh, we go through the next uh, two or three years, there'll be more and more of this kind of forecast information available in that week two time frame. Okay, and something that emergency managers and city planners and uh, folks in villages might be interested in keeping an eye out for, uh, looking for that information to be headlined, uh, whether that's on social media or perhaps uh, through uh, uh, the National Weather Service channels there to get information from like uh, from you to make better plans a little bit uh, longer term and make uh, better preparations in the event that things become a little bit more unsettled. Uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, Climate Services uh, with the National Weather Service Alaska region is talking to uh, the state of Alaska every week, uh, apprising them of uh, that uh, two-week outlook and, um, and uh, on the social media side, uh, we uh, are working to uh, keep Alaskans informed so that when we think we have uh, some confidence in a high impact or a big change, mm -hmm. to, uh, that's the best way right now for folks to uh, find out about that, uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook. So uh, uh, stay tuned to uh, your National Weather Service. Very good, a developing program. Rick Toman with the National Weather Service Alaska Region. He's a Climate Science and Services Program Manager. Thanks so much for joining us again, Rick, and hope to have you back again soon. Great, thanks, Dave. For another edition of Alaska Weather Facts, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. We'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, looking at uh, today's sea ice analysis for Saturday, November 11, 2017. Uh, of course, a lot of ice here on the eastern Beaufort Sea coastline. Thinning out, you get here toward the uh, central coast, and then, of course, uh, very thin there along the west side. And then still areas of here, Kotzebue Sound, a little bit there over uh, Norton Bay, and then along the north coast of the Yukon Delta. Of course, with the uh, gusty southerly winds and southwesterlies all through this area, we won't see much in the way of any ice growth here initially, but uh, closing in around Wrangell Island there. So this area up to the north uh, will continue to slowly increase here over the next four or five days, the forecast period. Onto the uh, coastal forecast gales for Lynn Canal, especially northern Lynn Canal with higher gusts and uh, gust of 40 knots here on the north coast central coast here, turning north, falling back to about 30 knots there at Yakutat, northeast 30, and diminishing to 25 out of the east for the south coast, southeast 20, Clarence Strait, and then back around to the north there for Stevens Passage at 30 knots with six foot seas. Outlook for Monday, southerly, or north 15, Clarence Strait, so the lightest winds down to the south, northerlies 40 knots, northern Lynn Canal, gales for the north coast. And for Prince William Sound, northwest, 30 knots tomorrow. Higher gusts still out of the Channel Bays, including Copper River Delta. Northwest 20 for the North Gulf Coast there. 30 knots here on the west side. Full gales there for the Barren Islands. Kachemak Bay falling back to 20, southern Cook Inlet. And the outlook for Monday, north 20 for the northern Cook Inlet area. Actually, the entire Cook Inlet zone will be north 20. Gales continue for Kachemak Bay and the Barrens. North 30 for the North Gulf Coast and Prince William Sound. For Kodiak Island, east side, northwest 30 knots, higher gusts early, west 30 for Shelikoff Strait, gales, Sitkanak to Castle Cape fall back to 20 knots there on down to Cape Sarachev, and that's the northwest 20 there for the uh, north side of the peninsula, more westerly at 25 for Bristol Bay. 
And the outlook for Monday, north 15 here, pretty light on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula, 20 knots, south side gales continue, Sitkanak to Castle Cape, and north 35 there on the east side of Kodiak Island. For the Aleutians, lightest here over the Fox Islands, 15 to 20 knots from the south, mostly. And then picking up 30 knots, small craft advisories here for the central Aleutians, all the way out to Shimmy and probably the Commodorskis. Next day, southwest 25 for the far western zone. Gales here out of the southeast ahead of that front, slowly moving eastward for the central Aleutians, strongest for Atka late in the day, earlier for ADAC, south 20 to 25 there for Alaska Island. Southwest coast, west 20 tomorrow, south 15 for the Pribilofs, west 20 St. Matthew Island, small craft advisories up there for St. Lawrence Island with those northwest winds. And then on Monday, swing it around to the east, 30 knots and 20 knots here north of Nunavak Island, lighter toward Kuskokwim Bay, 35 knot winds increasing too there for St. Matthew Island. Arctic coast, uh, east side, southwest, turning southeast over toward demarcation point for the day tomorrow. Uh, 20 knots, brisk wind advisories there for the uh, central coast, 25 knot winds there, seas up to 9 feet, uh, so that actually would be a small craft advisory. Full gales here, that's the big weather story continuing, westerlies 40 knots for the western Arctic coast all the way down to Wales. And then for Monday, those diminish considerably here, north to northwest to 20 knots up to Cape Beaufort. Small craft advisories here on the western coast fall back to north 20 central coast and Light winds out of the east, about 15 for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. For tonight, uh, strong winds, snow blowing, snow winter storm warnings for much of the northern interior. Brooks Range on out to the Arctic coast and then uh, down to the Seward Peninsula uh, for tonight into tomorrow for as much as 12 inches of snow falling. Heaviest amounts will be along the southern slopes of the western Brooks Range. Six to nine inches through Monday for the greater Fairbanks area. And rain, southern panhandle, windier with maybe some flurries in the north. Fair continuing here, dry and cool for south, south central Alaska, Kodiak Island. And then for the uh, Sunday outlook tomorrow, areas of snow advance all the way to the Alaska range there, uh, but uh, not too heavy there for the Cuscombe Valley. Winter storm warnings uh, begin to retreat back to the north, to the Brooks Range on out to the Arctic coast. For tomorrow, dry north Gulf Coast, uh, chance of moisture there for the mainly the central and southern panhandle of a mixed variety. And then uh, rain slowly pushing east with that uh, front. And again, the gales, wind, rain for the central Aleutians and areas of snow along the Alaska Range. Thanks for joining us. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master.